Good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well on this lovely day, Tuesday, June 9th. We are excited to be here. My name is Janine Fennell. I serve as the chair of the Career Advancement Committee for our C4 Award. Uh, welcome to our Council on Women in Energy and Environmental Leadership webinar series on working in a COVID-19 world. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, feel free to say yes or no, just uh, kind of getting this kicked off here. And uh, also, if uh, you can tell us where you're calling in from, we'd love to know. Uh, interested in connecting with people. Uh, one of our topics here is on virtual networking. So uh, also, if anyone's from an AEE chapter or a CWheel uh, representative, uh, feel free to let us know your name and where you're calling in from and welcome. I'm in the DC area and belong to the National Capital Chapter of the Association of Energy Engineers. Sea Wheel is a division of uh, AEE. So um, welcome and our session today will examine how the health pandemic has shifted the work environment for many of us to a virtual <laughs> workplace and how we can adapt to this new reality most effectively. This includes hey, how can we continue to engage with others to build our professional networks with the curtailment of many face-to-face -face events by pivoting to virtual, virtual networking? So looking forward to, to learning more about that. Oh, and I see uh, uh, someone is a member of Seawheel here, so fantastic. Um, so in terms of our format today, I'll provide a brief overview of our series, and then we'll hear from our two speakers who will each present for 10 minutes. We're then going to move to Q&A, so be sure to enter any questions that you may have in the chat box. And although we're officially scheduled uh, a half hour for the webinar, our speakers have said they can remain on the line a bit longer <laughs> if there more questions. And uh, we're also recording the webinar. In case you need to leave uh, promptly at 2.30, we'll be sending out the replay in the next day or so. So you can always uh, catch up and, and see what other questions there were. So um, let me just give an overview on Seawheel uh, by way of background. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a division of the Association of Energy Engineers. Seawheel assists women in energy and environmental sectors and provides networking and support in career development for established professionals and young women aspiring to leadership. The organization sponsors local and regional educational events and provides mentoring and scholarships for women pursuing energy and environmental careers. The purpose of these webinars are to help our SeaWheel members and others who are working in the energy environmental industry with career development, particularly during these times, you know, when we're navigating the COVID um, health epidemic and give practical tips and advice to, to help everyone, because I know these are, these are, are um, you know, tough times for, for everyone. And I'm um, just trying to see how, how we can help uh, everyone to move forward um, professionally and personally. Um, the webinars are scheduled for four consecutive Tuesdays throughout the month of June and they're open to SeaWheel members and everyone interested in these topics. So thank you for being here today. Um, today's <laughs> topics um, will have two speakers. Our first speaker will be Emily Beck, Networking in a Virtual World. And um, I don't know if any of you met Emily at the AEE World Conference uh, last September in DC. Uh, she gave us her hot tips on effective networking at events and she did such a great job. We reached out to her again to see if she could adapt her talk to virtual networking and she graciously agreed. So we're terrific. You know, just really happy to have her here from Denver. She's uh, the Denver Sea Wheel Chapter Liaison and the Director of Business with Schneider Electric's Clean Tech Division. Our second speaker is our fearless Sea Wheel Board Chair, Lori Wigan Jackson, and President of Utility Advantage. And she is going to share with her <coughs> her observations on creating visibility and success in a remote work environment. And Lori, just a shout out to you as well. Thank you so much for all the assistance that you've given to me in terms of planning this uh, webinar series. Um, just delighted to be a uh, part of the board with Lori. 
And um, just by background in terms of myself as, as moderating here, I also direct the Leaders of Energy, which is a nonprofit organization working to advance clean energy and sustainable solutions for a green economy and world. So um, let's see where I am here on these slides. Okay. Um, just a quick overview, then we're going to kick this off. Um, just want you to get excited about the uh, upcoming uh, webinar series. Um, we are going to have the impact of COVID on operations and personal impacts. We've got speakers from uh, NYSERDA, the New York State Energy Research Development Authority, and Siemens. On uh, June 23rd, we'll learn uh, tips on dealing with being furloughed or laid off during COVID. And we'll hear from a speaker who just started a new job in the pandemic. Um, then in the uh, webinar four on June 30th, was Lori, are you okay there? I was getting some, some feedback. Um, we will hear from um, those who are um, adjusting to working at home remotely who are in the energy industry. And I know one speaker has both their children and parents living in the same household. So uh, definitely some, some interesting situations and, and times. So um, lastly, just encourage you to become a member of our Seawill network and uh, you can learn more about our activities uh, at seawill.org. So um, without any further ado, uh, I will now turn over the program to our speaker, Emily Beck. Welcome, Emily. All right. Hey, everybody. Hope you all can hear me. I'm uh, dialing in from my cell phone. Laurie, or, uh, Laurie and Jean, is it good? It's good. Yeah? Okay. All right, cool. All right. Hey, everybody. Hopefully, I've met a few of you uh, at uh, one of the AEE conferences in, in the past. Um, so, let's see. Okay. So, I'm happy to be here today, and um, you know, I well pre-COVID, right? I would uh, share um, my Engager networking uh, uh, workshops at live conferences, live events, uh, to share the nine steps to rock any business event in person, right? Um, but because we're currently not in person, I thought today I would. I would uh, I would share a couple pointers on how we can optimize um, virtual engaging and, and and virtual networking. And so, Janine, if you want to progress to the next slide. I uh, yes, let, uh, there it goes. Okay, keeping me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so I thought I'd give you a couple tips today on on how to best position yourself to virtually network. Uh, to virtually engage, because you know what, I, I think it's actually more difficult to, to engage virtually um, than, than to just walk into a room and, and be in person with people. And, and virtual engaging and uh, virtual networking takes a, a, a bit of a different approach. And so, so I'm going to uh, share those different approaches with you today. But luckily, you, you, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Facebook, if, you, if you're kind of on Instagram, you're already engaging virtually. So, so these tips are really just to, it's just to, to enhance what you're already doing. So Janine, uh, next slide. I was just taking notes, okay. Okay, uh, click one more time, please. Okay, all right. So first we'll talk about how to be familiar to people that you haven't met yet online. Now, when, when you walk into a room, right, full of live, actual, real humans, right, you have so many tools at, at your disposal to share with people, to show people right then and there how familiar and engaging you are, right? You, you can come into the room with this amazing smile, right? You can, um, you can shake a hand. You can, you can give someone direct, sincere eye contact. You can, you know, just, just touch someone on the shoulder and say, I, I know what you mean, I know what you mean, or, or walk by someone and, and be like, hey, great, hi, you know, and or you can make a joke here and there. So I think it's much easier in person to make that first impression that, that enables you to appear, you know, your, your natural, familiar, and engaging self. So, so how do you make that online first impression? Okay, so, so here are a few tips to do that. 
Um, first and foremost, I think maybe this is the most important thing to start off with is, are you comfortable with your LinkedIn picture? And not just are you comfortable with it, but do you really like it? Does it really um, show who you are? Does it really show who you want to be or want to be perceived as, right? And so, and so I would say, you know, first take a look at your LinkedIn page, give it some personality. Um, these are some photos that I selected. Uh, I think that the, 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 top, um, uh, the top three there were, were voted some of the top LinkedIn photos of 2019. Um, and so I love the guy with the glasses. I mean, that's perfect. Like you want to reach out to that guy, right? Um, below him is Ariana Huffington, super famous person. I, didn't, I thought her, her picture was okay. It could have been a little more lively. Um, but the others are just some other people that I know on LinkedIn, and, and I just think their, their images and pictures are so engaging. You want to reach out to every one of, of, of these people, right? And so um, I encourage you to, to take a look at your photo. If you're not in love with it, just, just go outside and, and, uh, and take a more engaging photo that maybe represents you a little better. And forget trying to be all professional. Like, you know, you see all these LinkedIn photos like this and this. Like, forget that. Just, just have a good time with it and, and try to promote you as you, right? And you can also um, update your LinkedIn banner. You don't have to have, you know, the standard uh, rectangular um, uh, banner that LinkedIn provides you. You can actually update that with whatever you want. And there's an, uh, a great software that's free called Canva, and I'll show you an image of that in the next slide, um, that enables you to, to um, yeah, enables, enables you to up, upload all different kinds of things. It's free um, for, it, it's free unless you want to use their photos. Um, uh, if you want to use their photos, then, um, uh, uh, then it's $9.99 a month. Um, anyway, Jeannie, you're going to go back one, one, one click back. Um, so you can do that with, with any kind of social media platform. Uh, uh, now, if um, you've always wanted to write something um, but haven't known where to publish it, yes, you can publish it on LinkedIn, um, but there's also a platform called Medium. So you can be an author about anything you want to be and just with a click of a button on Medium, you, uh, you can post your article and then also begin to develop uh, your Medium, medium uh, network uh, to, to cross-reference that with your LinkedIn network. Uh, now about Instagram, you might have an Instagram page for your dog, right? But do you have one uh, uh, for, for your career or that, or that, that could be um, or, the, or, or, a, or an Instagram page where you could present your professional uh, life in a bit more of a fun way, you know, via Instagram stories or Instagram photos. Um, so, so let's say you're, you, you were creating this presence on LinkedIn and Medium and Instagram, Facebook maybe. Um, now, now you are engaging in all these different platforms. And the whole point of this is, is to offer more of yourself online to, you know, to give people more of you to connect to. And so this replaces the in-person smile and the eye contact and the handshake. Next slide, Janine. Uh, keep going after that. Okay, so let's say you have your, your, your online first impression ready to go. You're feeling really good about it, right? Well, now it's time to to knock on the uh, the virtual door um, to try to open that virtual door to a connection. Um, so oftentimes I, I will start with LinkedIn and reaching out to people on LinkedIn. Um, but these are a couple points to position yourself uh, to encourage uh, a, a best response. Um, so the first thing, which 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 you guys may already be familiar with. But, but I really like to emphasize this point that when you're on LinkedIn and you want to reach out to someone, try not to just try to like con uh, click connect right away. You don't want to send that connect invitation right away because they don't know you, right? And I think I, the person you're re reaching out to doesn't know you. And, and I think that, that the connect right away can often feel like what a hard sell feels like in, a, in an in-person conversation. You know, when you're, you're talking with someone and, and you get the hard sell and immediately that, that like wall goes up, right? And I think the same thing happens when you reach out to someone on LinkedIn and you, and you try to connect with them before developing that, that personal rapport. Um, so, so 
so I think um, we, we can try a few soft knocks on the door instead first. And so what I recommend is sending a message first. You can send a message via LinkedIn first, um, referencing something or someone that you have in common. Um, and now because you have written an article on, uh, on Medium and LinkedIn, you can send them a link to, to that article uh, that you've written. And then um, you can follow up with an email or a phone message to put a voice with your smiling LinkedIn photo. So, right, there are so many steps here, and, and th this is kind of what I mean by it, it being just a little more difficult and requiring more effort and different tactics to network virtually because it takes some time to build this online first impression, whereas in person it's like pretty quick to, to establish that rapport. Um, and I also put here, you know, make it worth it and safe for people to connect with you online. Because I don't know about you guys, but when when I when I get someone requesting to be a part of my network, whether it be LinkedIn or especially on Facebook, I'm kind of like, well, I don't know anything about you yet. I I I want to kind of vet you first before I let you into my my network. I don't know why it's so different than having a you know like an email or something, but but to have someone come into your network, well, that's kind of like a bigger deal versus you know just having a conversation with someone in person that there's no real commitment there, you know, but. But um, to let someone into your network, it just takes a little bit um, more uh, rapport uh, vetting, rapport building and, and vetting first. Um, and then um, Janine asked me the other day, she said, or, or no, Laurie asked me the other day, she said, well, how do you continue to foster these relationships, you know, once, once you are connected together? And, and really, the, the answer is just the same way that, that you approach them to connect. You just continue to share your articles and your videos and your posts and your photo and your photos on on medium and, and instagram and linkedin you just want to keep in front of your network just as you would uh if you were walking around you know the networking room live with people just keep visible right and relevant to your network by sharing more of you okay and then the next slide and last slide here How are we doing on time okay uh, um, yeah. good. good okay all right yeah, so one, one, a couple things about, about Zoom uh, video presentations. Um, uh, the beauty of, of Zoom video is that this is really your opportunity to connect more personally uh, with your new network. Um, and, and I'm a big fan of wearing something colorful uh, and lively like, like uh, Laurie has on there. Um, and I'm also a big fan of wearing something what I call you're gonna get this photo, <laughs> a wearable icebreaker right um, something like this just to show that you know like just give, give, maybe like give the audience something to connect to you and, and talk about little conversation starter um, and then what's also really great about zoom video is you can share your own custom background I know on on go to webinar you can't so that's why you're seeing my crayons in the background and all that but um, but on Zoom you can share a, a custom background, and so so um, you can share a picture of your dog or a cool trip you took, or that 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 picture there is of me in a pollen storm on top of a mountain on Sunday, um, you know. And so so that's a it's a great way to to share more of yourself and to connect further with your network. So that man, like you know, after seeing your your Zoom video and your Zoom background, yeah, they're they're ready to let you into your LinkedIn network. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that was some, those are some very uh, quick tips on uh, on on virtual engaging and virtual networking. Um, please uh, feel free to reach out to me, uh, Jean. If you want to go to the next slide, yeah, just that you can email me here, emilybeck.team at gmail.com, or you can send me a text five nine nine two five. Just text engager to that number, and uh, we can stay in touch. Thank you. Very good, Emily. Hey, thanks so much. Um, I know that the, the clock is ticking here, but uh, you had such good uh, information. I wanted to make sure that we cover it. And as I mentioned, we will spend a little bit of time afterwards uh, for those that want to hang on to the questions. So without any further ado, let's move on to, to Lori so that she can uh, get her a 10 minute presentation in. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Well, great presentation, Emily. I'm really happy to hear all that information that I've already started to uh, employ and took notes down. I'll be going to Canva for sure and making my uh, LinkedIn <laughs> banner special. 
And um, so I'm going to talk about visibility and success in a remote work environment. And Janine, if you want to click on the next slide, a little bit about my background. So I have been in the industry for over 30 years, and probably about half of that was working in a corporate setting. The other half was working as an entrepreneur for my own businesses. And in that time frame, I worked uh, remotely on and off in various positions. So I do know the firsthand benefits and the challenges of working from home. Um, I do uh, have a passion for uh, things like Sea Wheel, you know, working to bring more women into the industry and to help the environment. Those are really two of my key career drivers. I'm very active in my Christian faith and I'm a wife, a mom. And I have a 150 pound dog, Bella, who's in the picture there with me in my, at the time, very messy office. So look, I've cleaned it up. And um, I have two cats. So dog and cat lover. Next page. So when we think about working remotely, I know that for many of us, we can start to feel very isolated, a little bit invisible. Maybe some people like that feeling for a while. But when it comes to our careers, being invisible is not a good thing. We don't want to be lost in the crowd. We don't want to feel like what we're doing and the work and the progress that we're making is unimportant. So visibility is really a key to uh, making sure that people know what you're doing and that you have that ability to continue working on that career and its advancement, even though you're working remotely. So how is it? that we can be more visible. Uh, the first thing that I would say is that, you know, we are all participating in virtual meetings now. So whether you're on Teams or Zoom, these are uh, great work environments where we're able to not only be seen, but to see everyone else on the team as well. So the first thing I will say is just like any other meeting that you're attending, uh, be sure that you prepare in advance. So act as if you are literally walking into that meeting with the same expectations that your boss and your peers will have, that you've done the reading, you've done your work, and you are prepared for this meeting. Uh, the second thing is to be sure that in some way you contribute. So this is an opportunity to let people know what your views are and what you've been doing. So make that effort, you know, raise your hand, put yourself in there, and, and make a contribution during these meetings. That will definitely help you be more visible. The third thing is support your peers that are on, on the meeting calls as well. So as they're making comments and they're contributing into the meeting, you know, doing the head nodding, yes, I'm listening, the active listening signs, as well as giving affirmative statements uh, or even asking questions. Just be engaged with what they're saying as well. Uh, one of the things that Emily mentioned and I think is really important too is to bring your smile. It's contagious. It shows positive and very high energy, you know, and you're smiling in a meeting. And uh, so as appropriate, you know, show your smile. When you look at this picture, the people that really stand out to me are the ones that are smiling. So it's another way of just getting people to really see you in the midst of a group of people. And my last comment in here is be sure you schedule one-on-one -on -one time with your manager. So, you know, presumably your manager would be scheduling this time with you, but, you know, maybe not. So if you are in that situation where you're not getting that time scheduled by your manager, then, you know, we do this thing called managing up the, up the, uh, the ladder there. So, right, so we're going to start asking our managers, can we schedule some one-on-one -on -one time? I really want to go over this with you, and I'm going to go in the next slide over some of the things you want to talk about. So one of the things that's happening during this period of COVID-19 is that it's had a significant impact on our businesses. So you want to have a conversation about the annual goals and key performance indicators that uh, were in place previously. Well, they need to be reviewed and maybe updated uh, to address that impact of the shutdowns and the impact on the business. So have that conversation. Maybe you've already been privy to that dialogue, but maybe not. So have that conversation with your manager and ask specifically, how are the company's KPIs changing? And then how does that impact your personal goals and KPIs? And assess those accordingly and get your manager's approval. So it's great to confirm everything in those conversations that you have. Confirm them back in an email just to say, you know, I want to be sure that I'm clear 
and uh, give your you know quick bullet points on what you understand so that you're all marching in the same direction and literally looking to achieve the important objectives for the rest of the year. And then uh, the last point, um, briefs, again, it could just be bullet points, but showing what progress you're making. So it may not always be readily visible, the work that you're doing, but you wanna make sure that they know that while you're working remotely, these things are happening. So uh, give those regular um, email briefs to your manager and make their life a little easier that they're getting this feedback from you instead of having to ask for it. Next slide, Jimmy. thank you. Uh, I wanted to briefly address the issue of parenting and working from home. So I had the opportunity and challenge of having my first remote work experience the, at the same time that uh, I was giving birth to my son. He's 23 now, so we're going back in time ways. Um, I had started a new job, and then shortly thereafter found out I was pregnant. And so uh, here I was working remotely, and, uh, and, and then ultimately parenting from, uh, you know, newborn through toddler years. So uh, some of these ideas come from firsthand experience. First is, you know, plan your business calls for time frames that are the best for you in your situation, wherever possible. And in, in fact, have conversations, say with your manager that, you know what, the best times to reach me are, you know, between uh, two and four, that's typically when my kids are taking naps or, uh, you know, when my kids watch their favorite TV shows and are kind of really engaged in that, so that the uh, distractions that you have can really be limited and the number of interruptions limited. Um, the second is create separate work environments. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, I love this picture of mom and her daughter on the floor. She's got her laptop and she's helping her daughter. But if you're in that very same space, like literally on the floor together, uh, it can be really challenging to stay focused and not get uh, drawn into participating in activities. So there's a little bit of a desk showing there. I would even say that, you know, if you have to have eyes on and, and be part of it, you know, go sit at the desk, keep yourself somewhat separated, just have that conversation that you need a little time to focus on, you know, mommy time or daddy time for work uh, and, and try to keep keep that uh, interaction uh, limited when you can. Um, if you have a partner, you guys coordinate your time frame. So schedule times where you do your business calls and they do their business calls at alternate times. So that can be really helpful. So the interruptions go to your partner instead of you. Um, and then if there are trouble times, like times where you know things generally tend to go a little crazy with the kids, then make it clear to your peers and your manager that, you know, these are times that would be really helpful if we could avoid. So that like 8.30 a.m. or 9 a.m. phone call or meeting, that may be really tough for you because your kids are still really just getting going, uh, something along those lines. And the last part I have is, you know what, in spite of all of that, with all of us, including those that we supervise and, and our managers, be flexible, be honest. So if something's going on, you know, just say, hey, I, I've got a situation and I'm going to need to back out of here for, for a couple of minutes and I'll be back or, or we can reschedule and, and be forgiving of each other. Because, you know, this is uh, something that we haven't had. Uh, it wasn't necessarily by choice. Right. People are now in this environment and taking on a lot of responsibilities, helping their kids with schoolwork, all kinds of things going on. So we need to be forgiving of each other. Next. Uh, and uh, so remote team building. Uh, this can be interesting too, you know, it's great when we work together and we can go and sit in the, in the uh, cafeteria or in our little conference room and have a cup of coffee and a date and have some conversation and, you know, we get that social interaction and we build our teams, but now we need to do that stuff uh, remotely. So I think that this is a great opportunity for people to be creative, come up with some fun ideas of things that you can do that aren't just about work, but can keep you together as a team and really enjoying each other because creativity and innovation really go hand in hand. And we need both right now more than ever, especially innovation in a time frame like this. So here's just two ideas, but there are many and you could go on the internet probably and find some, but even just your own ideas, be willing to put them out there because people will be like much more willing to uh, try something different in this environment than we had in the past. 
So a weekly photo share, it could be something where you say, let's share photos of a vacation before COVID-19. Like we can't take vacations that readily right now. So, you know, that might be fun to reminisce about those times or something that ha is happening through COVID, how you're dealing with it. Or a take your kids to work, you know, let your kids show up for, for the beginning of a, a meeting and, and see each other. Your kids are going to love that. Uh, and, and, or pets. Now, the pets may not love it, but we love sharing our pets, don't we? And on my last slide is uh, about balance. So I strongly encourage trying to maintain some lot of a schedule. So when we work from home, uh, it could be really easy to go and watch that TV show or go out and do gardening. I mean, there's so many things. Uh, I will say doing laundry for me was always one of the great things about working from home. I got like, because it's really easy. It doesn't take long. You just jump in and throw a load and, and you're, you know, things get moving. So I was super productive and efficient working from home. But try to maintain that schedule and not get pulled into things that are just around the house that uh, could distract you. This picture of the guy in bed, and I would say, maybe we've all been here at some point. I know I have, but uh, get dressed for work. And I'm not saying dress in a suit or anything like that, but try to avoid the habits of like staying in bed to work or staying in your PJs. Uh, and one of the ways to force yourself out of that is to do video meetings. And those video meetings can even just be, you know, peer to peer, coffee time, I just want to catch up with you, let's do a quick, you know, 10 minute uh, Zoom meeting, and you do that, uh, that connection. Um, you can also do that outside the company from networking purposes. Uh, so I do encourage that you try to do about an hour a week of networking or virtual connecting, again, within and outside of the company with peers that you have. So again, whether it's that, let's have a virtual coffee together, or, um, you know, a cocktail, whatever works, uh, but try to have that that uh, time, and it will force you to get yourself dressed. Um, and then make a weekly completions list. So not just a to-do list, though they are important, but what I find is having that list of these are the things that I completed this week, that's a pretty powerful list. It's very motivational as well. When you see the things that you've accomplished, then you're like, oh, okay, I can do more next week, or I want to get this done next week. And it kind of sets the stage. And then, you know, pat yourself on the back, celebrate however you like to celebrate when you accomplish things, because you're not getting all the same kind of feedback that you would normally get in a work environment where you're around other people. So we kind of have to do this for ourselves. And it's a great way to keep yourself on task and motivated, even though you're working remotely. So those are my uh, recommendations, and I think I am close to staying on time. Um, please connect with me. I would love to engage with you. Uh, here's my email information, my phone number. That's my cell phone number, so you can text me at that number as well, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn, um, but I would love to connect. Thank you. Fantastic, Lori. Thank you so much. And um, Really enjoyed your presentation. I know we're about two minutes over on the uh, 2.30, but we were um, thinking that we might run over. So um, want to do open it up for questions. Um, I also wanted to say hi to Emily uh, um, Duff, who um, um, is was uh, listening in. She had to take off, but uh, Mick Duff, I'm sorry. She's uh, in our, our uh, Washington DC chapter and uh, really helped us on the Sea Wheel uh, extravaganza. And she said it was great to, to see all of us on, on the webinar today. Uh, and uh, Julie Chandler had a quick question about uh, if we'll be having more virtual events. Um, I hope I interpreted that right as opposed to in person. And I um, said yes as part of our webinar series. So hopefully I understood that question correctly. Uh, feel free if there are any other questions on the line, we'll, we'll take. Um, stay on for about five to ten more minutes. Again, there will be a replay of this webinar in case uh, you, you do have to take off and uh, want to come back and uh, circle uh, back to get uh, some of the great advice that has been offered here. Um, Lori, I just wanted to start with you. I really like what you said about not just having a to-do list. It's so interesting that you mentioned this because I've just started really a you know daily to-do list and red letters you know just check 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 um but I, I like how you said to have a completed list so i guess my question to you is do you complete that at the end of the week and look back on everything or do you do that on a daily basis i'm just uh you that that tip got my attention 
That's a great question. Uh, you know, I would probably encourage people to do that daily. I um, struggle a little bit with procrastination. That's one of my personal challenges, although I'm much better. And uh, so what typically happens for me is it's an end of the week activity. And I have to take a little more time because I've got to sit and really reflect on the things that I completed. Um, but certainly it's easier if you do it like as you're completing stuff and you kind of put your list over to the side and just fill them in. And then you can just look at it on Friday and be like, wow, look at all I've done. Uh, but for me, I, I end up doing it on, on Friday, and it's a nice wrap-up to my week and kind of thinking about what I'm going to do the following week. Very, very good. Uh, Emily, a question for you. Um, I've got Instagram for my um, organization, um, and uh, you mentioned using Instagram as well for, for you. Um, do you. Do you actually um, post work pictures or is it personal pictures or maybe you'd uh, see like a, a windmill or wind machine or something like that? Um, tell me more about how you meld it from the personal and in a professional. Well, the truth be told, I, I have, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So truth be told, I have not actually started my professional Instagram page yet. It's coming soon. Okay. Um, and I'll be sharing, and, and on the Instagram page, I'll be sharing some pictures and stories about um, about uh, our clients that, that have done remarkable things with renewable energy um, and, and engaging uh, with, with, you know, um, other corporates and people in the energy space um, that, to, to share those successes with the group. Um, so, so instead of just posting it on, on LinkedIn, like an article, I'll just be taking a snippet of that LinkedIn um article and, and making it more fun via photos but still getting the the ultimate message across about like wow look at what this company did but in a little bit more of a fun way so yeah i think that's soon. great because mm -hmm. we're all kind of deluged with with articles and everything so uh definitely yeah. the old adage yeah. of you know picture says a, a thousand words but are you saying you have a personal instagram account and you're going to make that separate from the professional yeah. So when I when I mentioned, you know, you might have an Instagram account for your dog. I do have one of those for my dog. Um, so no, yes, I would be creating an entirely separate Instagram account specifically for for business purposes, but making it a little more fun. Okay, that's interesting because I didn't think I wasn't aware that you could do that. So learn something new every day because on LinkedIn, I know people have asked if they can do multiple profiles, and generally what I've heard is you do one profile. And that's it. So um, interesting about the, the Instagram there. Okay. Okay. Very yep. good. You can have multiple Instagram accounts. Yep. Okay. Very good. And um, one other question. You mentioned Medium. I wasn't familiar with that. How does that differ from LinkedIn Pulse in terms of um, have you used LinkedIn Pulse for writing articles as well? Because I know I have used LinkedIn Pulse, but you're saying Medium is another way to write an article and then post that on LinkedIn. What are kind of the pros and, and cons? Yeah. 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 Yep. Good question. So Medium is another platform separate from LinkedIn that you can use to publish your your articles. So um, LinkedIn is, you know, you have one network on LinkedIn that you, if you do post something there, it'll be going to that specific LinkedIn network. But if you write something on Medium, it, it, it could go to anyone in the world. Right. So so really Medium gives you an opportunity to to network and share your 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 story or your article with with people that are not yet in your LinkedIn uh, network. Fantastic. Well, I'm still showing a good number of people on the call, so I really appreciate everyone hanging in here uh, with us, even though we did go beyond the uh, official call time. Uh, this uh, Thanks for everyone's patience and kind of bearing with us. It's our first webinar here in the series, so just trying to gauge um, how much time we really felt that, that we needed. And as I said, it has been recorded. Uh, if people did have to leave early. Um, Lori or Emily, uh, any questions for each other or any other observations? And also, have you been seeing any questions come in? I just wanted to make sure that I'm not missing any and you know, hopefully uh, covered everything that, that I'm seeing. Um, Janine, this is Michelle. I do see some more questions that have come in over the last few minutes. Oh, good. Could you, just could you then be them Thank you, because I was looking at both yeah. my questions in chat and just wasn't seeing. Okay, go go ahead. Uh, so we have Miriam has asked, 
uh, well, she said, thank you so much. This was great. What are some of the specific changes or strategies you've implemented in your public speaking or present presentation style when moving online? How do you gauge your pace of speaking, et cetera, without being in person? Is that for either one of us? Do jump in, whoever uh, wants to. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not specific to, to either one of you. So I would say whoever wants to go. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I'll, 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 I, oh, good, good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like the progressive commercial on Zoom where everybody talks over each other. Um, so yeah, I think that um, it's really important for presentations that you be willing to turn that webcam on. So I know that a lot of times when we're doing remote presentations, you know, we can get the PowerPoint presentation, we can do the go-to meeting or, you know, webinar, WebEx, whatever your medium is. Or you could even just email the presentation and say, okay, next slide, right? And you're flipping through it together. But you're missing something if you don't get to see each other. So right now, you know, Emily and I are actually getting to see each other. And we were seeing Janine before. When you can see a person's facial expressions, you can really engage. And then having them have the ability to interact with you. So the same as you would giving any presentation, you really, I mean, outside of this setting, you really want it to be interactive. So you're, as you're going along, you're asking questions, you know, tell me, uh, you know, have you had that experience? Is, do you understand? Uh, do you have any questions? You know, you're asking along the way of your presentation. But I think the critical aspect of it is be willing to turn on that webcam. And this is as close as we're going to get to having that in-person meeting. I mean, it, it is very close to being in person. So that'd be so my Marie, recommendation. This is Janine. Are you saying that by doing that, it kind of helps you pace yourself? Because the only problem I would see is that in an actual face-to-face -face event, you can read your audience. You can see if, you know, someone is getting antsy or, you know, if they're looking really interested, but you really can't do that uh, virtually. So how, how do you uh, pace yourself? Yeah, in this broader uh, medium of like the big presentation to lots of people that we're doing, uh, it is difficult. So uh, it's it's more of a practice your presentation, try to keep it to the time frame, and then um, we are using the chat and the questions as a way of engaging. I know that I I didn't use them as effectively as I wanted to, where as we're going along in the presentation to be asking questions and asking, soliciting feedback. Um, but we were doing this in a really tight time frame, so it made it a little harder. Uh, yeah. Having a little more time would open it up to that kind of engagement and more of a, a discussion while you're giving the presentation. Exactly, good point. Emily, you wanna chime in anything on that? I think Laurie covered really the, the primary points. What I would suggest though for, for future webinars maybe is, is to use Zoom because then you can see everyone on the screen and that, and that enables the speakers and, and, and the, the audience to engage more. Um, so, so I, yeah, I know, I know, I know how many uh, people too. Yeah, I mean, a thousand yeah. people, that's gonna be tough, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Michelle, any, uh, I think we've got just a couple, a minute or two left uh, to 2.45, any any uh, quickie question? Yeah, we have a couple uh, others. Um, Nandini has asked a um, question to Emily. Um, let me see, is it okay to ask the LinkedIn contact for his or her email in the first or second contact, or is that considered like a hard, a hard no? Yeah, okay, so you can say, you know, I'd really love to share more and more of whatever this and this and this with you. Is it okay if I send you an email? Maybe, I think maybe, yeah, ask for the email um, after they've reached back out to you. If, if they reach back out to you after you've sent them a message, sure, yeah, because you can share a lot more, um, you know, obviously via email than, than a message on LinkedIn. So if they respond to you, then sure thing, yep. Also, um, if you have, uh, an account with Zoom info, you can find their email. Uh, so, so go ahead and, and send them an email too, if you have Zoom info with your company through your company or something.
Okay, great. And then we have um, from Isabella, uh, what to do when the online presence, so when your online posts are not generating any discussions. So if, you know, for example, she puts something on LinkedIn and she's not getting any comments or shares, um, what can she do to kind of generate more discussion on the, those topics? Is that for me? It's not specific, okay, but since you talked about LinkedIn, go for it. Yeah, yeah, okay, so what I would say is, yeah, so there are so many posts that you gotta read, right? There's so many news feeds and LinkedIn feeds and blah, right? And so, and so um, it's not surprising if they're not getting read. And if you have a huge LinkedIn network of, of 500 plus people and you're getting, I don't know, like, 10 people reading your posts, don't be frustrated by it. Just try a different avenue. You can try the medium approach where people actually do spend time reading those articles or try the Instagram approach because people, I mean, Instagram, from what I know from uh, YouTube star managers is that Instagram is the place where people are really interacting with what you have to say and, what, and with what you have to show. So if you have a cool, a photo about what you're doing in your career and a little blip about it instead of a whole article, and then I think you'll get a lot more responses there. So I would definitely check out the Instagram uh, platform, and then you don't have to write a whole article. You can you can just you know, post a great photo and uh, and and then write a few sentences and get wow, more Wow, that is interesting. Wow, huh? I'm I'm kind of surprised on the professional side, but um, that's a new insight for me. Thanks, Emily. What do you think, Michelle? How many more questions? It's 2.45. Um, I'm thinking we should probably do a wrap shortly, maybe one more. Yeah, I don't see any more questions. There's just uh, one more comment um, says from Clint Christensen. Thanks, everyone. Self-management and self-promotion are both important points. So I think that is a great yeah. point and a great way to start your wrap up. <laughs> Excellent. Well, gosh, thank you to everyone who was on the line today and so many people that stayed with us to the end, uh, even though the end was a little bit longer than we had initially anticipated. Thank you to our wonderful speakers uh, for staying uh, with us and, and uh, answering all the questions and to Michelle Whitlock for all that she does for SeaWheel uh, in her capacity with the Association of Energy Engineers. Um, Emily and Lori, any last um, thoughts from, from you as, as we wrap? No, I just want to say thanks and hi, everybody. Hi and bye. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, Janine, for organizing this uh, program for us. You did a great job moderating and Michelle as well uh, for organizing and doing the technical support. That was awesome. And, uh, you know, everybody hang in there. It's uh, it's, it's a challenging time that we're in right now, but it's one that is filled with unique opportunities. So while we are in the midst of a challenge, let's rise up, let's try innovative new things, be willing to put yourself out there, take some risks. And, uh, you know, before you know it, we're going to be in a whole different work environment again and going through some new transitions. So uh, make the most of what you have right now. And uh, God bless you all. Take care. Very good. And just a reminder that you can register for our upcoming Sea uh, Wheel webinars that will take place uh, throughout June every Tuesday. I have the web link up here and uh, feel free to learn more about Sea Wheel at the website. Thank you so much and have a good rest of your day. Bye, guys. <laughs>